What's going on YouTube and cryptocurrency family? My name is Harry and I'm the Crypto Vet. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, sorry about the couple days of being off. I had to spend some time to recover on my knee, but it's starting to get a little bit better here. So we're gonna get back into this. And uh, if you were bored during the weekend, it's because it was boring and there wasn't that much to report on, but now we got some stuff to go over and some possible breakouts that could be happening, especially with Ethereum. Where's Bitcoin heading? And we also have some more news on XRP. If you guys were listening to me, I told you guys to wait and that ended up to be a really really good idea so uh where do we go from here if you like that hit the like hit the subscribe if you haven't already follow me on twitter at xrp veterinarian and uh, links for twitch discord and all the other goodies are down below but let's go ahead and get started here if we head over to coin market cap we got a lot more green today here on the on the top 10 uh, if we head over to the biggest gainers, we have Hollow Hot going up. We have Matic going up, which are two that uh, you guys know that I liked. I actually cashed out 75% um, on both of those projects just because I was in big profits. So uh, potentially we'll be looking into buy back when they correct some more. But, you know, with alt season coming potentially here in the next month or so, um, which we will go over. Um, I'm mostly just holding and just taking a little bitty profits here and there and uh, diversifying them into the biggest losers category because this is where I want to buy and these are the ones I want to sell. Biggest losers here, we do have Pundi, one of the ones I do like, only down about a half a percent, but it's already been up, I think, over 150% in the last month. But let's get started on Bitcoin here. Uh, yesterday, we did have the weekly candle close for Bitcoin, and fortunately, we didn't really get above where I wanted us to get above. I wanted us to get above the $57,500 area and stay above that. Now, are we out of the water yet and that this is going to go down? Not exactly, but we're also not in the clear that this is going to go straight, straight up. So if we look here on the weekly, we can see that this 57.5 point um, depicted by this like reddish line here has had one, two, three, four, five candle bodies close or open right at this range, showing that this 57.5 is a very, very key resistance as well as in this one week, a very, very good support. So if we can get above this and we can stay above it, there's a lot of room for Bitcoin to go. Um, and looking at the macro scale here, even though we do have a lot of uh, bearish divergences and things like that, this is a bull run. So those can extend for many, many weeks on. Uh, Bitcoin can either trade sideways, can drop down a little bit, recover, bounce up. You know, every scenario that every crypto YouTuber or anything says, right? But this is all about probabilities here. So if we go all the way back to December, so the beginning of this year, we have been on this uptrend and it goes back even further, but we can see that we've formed this bearish pennant here and we've bounced in. We came up, we hit the top, hit the bottom, hit the top. And then right here, we were saying that there's a chance that we could come down. And I gave different probabilities for where we could go, where there would be good support on the way down, and where I thought my most likely scenario scenario was. <clears throat> my realistic drop in my most likely scenario was that we would drop down to around the $46,500 range. And the reason why is because we could see here we have resistance, which turned to support, support, and this is right when Elon Musk bought all the Bitcoin for Tesla. So let's go ahead and zoom into the daily here. All right, if we zoom into the daily, let's get that VPVR out. We can see that we have this nice big W pattern forming and potentially an even bigger W pattern forming. We fell below support on this bearish pennant, but we were able to get right back up, back above the 20 daily exponential moving average, this blue line, and now we're finding resistance right at that 57.5. Well, in this short term, which goes back to about March 21st, so about a week here, uh, we'll wait a little more in a week, uh, two weeks, sorry, March 9th till now. We can see that we've been forming this little pennant here, depicted by the green lines. We came up, came down, bounced off to 20 daily, came up, found resistance on this line here, came down, we dropped below our support, but found support again in this new zone here, got it back above the 20 daily exponential, back above this support. So right now the bulls and the bears are fighting each other pretty evenly. 
eventually one of them will give it. All right, the longer we go and we stay at this price, the more likely, the higher the probability that we will continue to go up, especially with more people buying, um, increased interest, more money printing, all of these things add into the macro scale of what's gonna happen with the price action of Bitcoin. So for where we're at right now, we are back above this and we're struggling against this new resistance. So right now, Bitcoin is within a very, very tight range. Bitcoin could break out here and we would jump to the upside and continue this pennant, potentially get above here and go to the moon, right? Or we could drop back below this support here, below our 20 daily exponential moving support average and continue down. And this doesn't mean that this is the end for Bitcoin. It just means that we are still going to continue consolidating further here, right? We could come back down, go all the way down to around 47 and a half, 46,000 and a half, dollars and we would still be in a very bullish scenario for Bitcoin. It's just in the short term, we are going to have potential moves of about $10,000 in value. This doesn't mean that anybody who predicted it going up or down was wrong. It just means it needs to take a little bit longer to get there. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. We'll go ahead and head to the four hour here. And on the four hour, we can start to find new patterns that could potentially let us know where we're going. All right, if we look right here, let me get my drawing pen. We have what looks to be a left shoulder, a head, and a potential right shoulder. Now, whenever I see a head and shoulders pattern, it doesn't mean that just because we have this pattern, we're gonna go to the upside. But what it does mean is that there is gonna be a tendency to go to the upside, especially when you have support and resistances that are confirming below or above it. So for example, if we had a big resistance right here where that red line is, which also happens to be a big resistance overall for the past couple of weeks, and we get above it and confirm it like we did here, this reverse head and shoulders seems a very, very logical pattern to break out to the upside. The probability has now moved even higher to go to the upside only because we not only confirm this pattern by getting above this neckline, but we also have that neckline as a big resistance that we had before. So by getting above this, not only is it overcoming a previous hurdle, but it's also overcoming the hurdle to confirm that this pattern has a higher likelihood to break to the upside. So if we take this little measured move of where it was here and I actually have it drawn a little bit too low, we'll go right to there from bottom of the point to the neckline and we move it back to the neckline, what happens? It is exactly to the top of this bearish pendant resistance. Math is math. This works out because this is just, again, probabilities and averages overall. So my expectation here in the short term is if we can hold above this neckline of 57.5, I think that there's a high likelihood that we will break up to a target of around $64,000. This would be a new all-time high. This would uh, also potentially set off a big parabolic run to the upside because we could overshoot, find support here, and continue up. That's one scenario. The most likely is, is we'll come back up, set this new time all-time high, trade sideways somewhere in here for a while. Month of April, this could be, you know, about a week or so. Find support around 60K, which would be back down at the bottom support of this bearish pennant, and then we will continue our way to the upside slowly. So um, we'll see if this actually plays out, but this is the most uh, recent pattern that I can find here in the four hourly. We can go down to as, you know, as much as the four hourly compared to the hourly. This is both of those side by side. And we can see here's the head and shoulders pattern. We broke to the upside. We have our 57 thousand five hundred dollar point we have flipped the ema ribbons here on the four hour we can see that this blue wave was now at the bottom is now here at the top maybe easier to show it on this one here let's get rid of these little lines here but we can see that this blue wave it was on the top and now as we come down, the wave was on the bottom, and now we're back above the blue wave here. So a lot more bullish momentum showing in the short term. So I would expect a move to go to the upside. You know, personally trading, I'm not personally trading this right now, but a stop loss below around 55,600, which is right below the four hour EMA with a price target of close to around 63,000. I wouldn't try to push for 64, but you know, this would be a very, very nice little trade that could be made from right now with a 
risk reward of about three. So um, that's just something for Bitcoin. If we move over to Ethereum, I know there's a lot of talk about Ethereum right now. As you can see, we had news that Visa is saying that they will use the Ethereum network potentially for different types of settlements with the USDC coin as the pegged stable coin. And we had a nice break to the upside, but we still found resistance on the same line that's forming for this big symmetrical triangle that Ethereum is in. If we look though, the last time we had a little bitty reverse head and shoulders here, we pumped to the upside, hitting the target exactly. Same goes for right now. We have another little reverse head and shoulders. And just like the previous um, chart for Bitcoin, I put a line where there was very good support and resistance depicted by this purple line. And what do you know? We broke above that, came down and kind of confirmed it and broke to the upside. However, the target for this is much larger than where Ethereum is right now. So we could potentially see Ethereum, and I'm gonna drop it a little bit lower, Ethereum break through this resistance, come up to around the $1,900, $1,950 point, which is, was a previously strong resistance, maybe confirm this current resistance and have a nice break to the upside. So going up, coming down, and then continuing to the upside. So we'll keep an eye on Ethereum and see where it's going from here. But um, this is what I'm expecting and waiting for as far as that. Now back to XRP. We have XRP right now breaking through two potential points that were very, very strong resistances. However, the one resistance that XRP has not broken through yet is that 60 cent region. When XRP breaks through the 60 cent region, that is when I will be um, starting for a potential long. Now with all the FUD, with all the SEC news, um, Ripple fighting back, they're doing this, they're not, you know, Jay Clayton not uh, potentially being involved with some Ethereum scandal, whatever the case may be. All of this stuff makes it to where people don't want to buy XRP. So a lot of momentum is building up. We had big W patterns here, but now we flipped to almost two, to a big M here. So um, this is why I said, you know, just because we broke through this, we, we have lots of resistances above us still. Um, that main one being right at about 60 cents here. And you can see where we have these wicks. We can't even tell how close we are to breaking through those because every time we get close, we wick back down very, very fast. So yeah, personally, I want to see us stay above and close a daily, hopefully a weekly candle above 60 before I would really be looking for a long. Now XRP can definitely be explosive and move to the upside very, very fast, but I think we would need some relisting of XRP on several exchanges for that to occur. Um, some answers that XRP is not a security by the SEC. You know, there's a whole list of things that would need to cascade together before I could say confidently that we're going to go to the upside. You know, XRP is a waiting game. We're just going to have to keep waiting and see where this goes. Um, for right now, um, I still think we have another week or two before this will happen. Of course, XRP will probably follow the price action of Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin steadily goes up, I could expect to see XRP steadily go up at the same time. So in the short term for XRP, we can see that right above this, uh, well, I'll have to draw another line here but we have this little area where we finally got back above and we're bouncing between two different resistances here we have forming a nice little symmetrical triangle where we are now currently above it and potentially confirming a break to the upside however we have a lot of selling pressure going on at the same time we're a little overextended on the rsi on all time frames up to about 12 hours. So um, I feel like this here would be more likely to be a bull trap and we would potentially come back down to retest that 50 cent point again, which is gonna put us close to the 20 daily exponential moving average. And then if we hold there, we could maybe see it W out of this M pattern. But I do expect that unless there's some news, unless Bitcoin goes crazy, um, that we will just slowly bounce in this area for XRP for at least the next week. So we're just going to keep an eye on that. Um, big thing is now is we need to see Ethereum make its move here. We need to see Bitcoin get back above that 57,000, try to retest the 60K point. And when those things happen, we can potentially um, start seeing where the altcoins and other things will go. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I will be streaming later today, so I will catch you guys in the next one.